It's still plus politics. Now we talk about the um, electoral uh, um, electoral act amendment bill. The Inter-Party Advisory Council in Lagos State has called on President Muhammadu Buhari to assent to the electoral act amendment bill 2021 without delay. Now, the IPAC chairman in Lagos State, Mr. James Adishina, uh, has said that there was an urgent need to overhaul the electoral system to foster credible and transparent elections if Nigeria must progress and succeed in its democracy. But joining us to discuss this is the IPAC national chairman, Dr. Leonard Nzenwa, and legal practitioner, Tunji Abdulhamid. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Good evening. Great, great, great. I'm going to start with you, Dr. Nzenwa, because, um, of course, this is IPAC pushing uh, for this to be done. I'm wondering, do we need to push the president to assent to this bill? This is something that um, every Nigerian needs. This is something the government also says it needs for the electoral processes um, in this country to be smooth sailing, to be free, fair and credible. Why do we also have to urge the president to append his signature? Mr. Zewa, can you hear me? I don't think you, you can hear me. Um, well, I think we're having connection issues. So, Tunji, I'm going to uh, toss that question to you. Go ahead. Yeah, ordinarily, we ought not to, excuse me, we okay. ought to put pressure on the, is it back? No, no, no. We ought not to put pressure on the president to sign a, a letter B into, into law. They are probably people are pushing for that because uh, of what is on ground. You know, the, if, you, if you are aware of, of what the, the governors are make, having uh, meetings to ensure that uh, a certain uh, part of the law did not pass. And probably because of that, the president may just because of one particular aspect of the law throw away everything because we are used to throwing the baby away with the bathwater in this country. Remember the last uh, eight, and eight, eight assembly? So just due to one reason or the other that, that allowed them to throw away every good other thing in that law. They they are thinking of that. But probably because if the governor could be able to inf inflate the president, the president may change his mind and not sign the, the act into law. So they are trying to push him to do it on time so that uh, it will not uh, uh, be go the way of other uh, bees that have been thrown out. Um, but, but again, uh, on the issue of the Electoral Act bill in itself, there's so many amendments, um, so many things that have been uh, taken out and se several things that have p been put in. Um, and the people who are sitting on the floor of this National Assembly, majority of them obviously are Mr. President's party. So whatever it's, it is in that particular bill that will be made law, Obviously, um, these people have seen it. They've given it a nod. So again, I'm still wondering why that bill will be tossed under the carpet or tossed into the bin like every other bill. It's very important that we need it because 2023 is around the corner. And we saw um, some of the elections that have happened so far and, and the inconsistencies that have happened. But this bill is supposedly to change all of those inconsistencies. So again, why do we need to be having this conversation? Yeah, you see, unfortunately, I'm one of those uh, who are so also uh, is not in support of the direct primary for parties. I'm one of them. I, I am not. I, I, I believe it's good for us. I believe it's the best for us. But I also believe we are not right to do it now because we don't have the mechanism. We don't have the log logistics. We what, don't have the what finance. Do you, what do you mean by we don't have the mechanisms? Because I'm thinking that if we put it somewhere in our bills then we should be able to make those things available Can't yes we? we should be able, we should be able to make it available but i i have lived in nigeria for long and i know the way we operate so have i i, I am a, i am a, I, I i witnessed the last uh, primary of certain parties the whereby they say they were the direct primary it wasn't direct primary so just a, a allocation of figures that is why you see some people will win the primary with five million votes or three million votes and in the, in the course of the May, May election, it will score just like 200 or, or even 50,000 or, or, or 10,000. You, 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 you see, I believe we don't have a mechanism. What do I mean by mechanism here? For example, the basic responsibility to have this uh, direct primary work very well is the data, the, the verifiable data of the parties. I'm not aware if there's any party in this country that has a valid registered photo of members in this country. And I, I'm not sure. They can be verified, even if they present one. I'm not sure we can verify whether or not 
These are the actual party really, members. Really, but the APC has just gone through a process uh, of re-registering uh, their party members. So you're telling me that that whole process was a total the waste PPP of time because there is no register. No, I'm not saying you, we can, they can have register. They, can, they will have register. But when it comes to the election itself, people who are not on the register are the people that will be on the queue. Or sometimes they will not even have any, any, any people. They will just allocate people. And that will be all. And you see, most importantly, again, we are most of the party. What we are trying to call is to, to, to reduce the influence of a uh, of prayer or Godfather. But I, I tell you, that direct primary will not eradicate it because I, if you really see, if you remember the last primary in Lagos State, I'm Chawolu and Ambode for direct primary. Ambode at that uh, at that time is not, was not popular. People don't know him, but because that's what the, the leader of the party are looking for, and that's what they wanted at that time. He was in the ticket, and he won like he won with, uh, with millions of millions of votes. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the main election, he won with just of, 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 of eight eight hundred thousand votes or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, which means those who are voting are not even party members, and they cannot be verified. Secondly, most of the people we have today as party members, they are not financial party. They are not financially financially uh, committed to the party, mm -hmm. and therefore they are under control of certain people who, who finance the party. So, with whatever those people are going to, that's where they go. Okay. And most importantly, again. This, it is more a task for INEC because look at it like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Assuming we have 50 political parties and they all want to do their primary because the law, the, the new law, requires that INEC must provide the, 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 the primaries for it to be valid, which means INEC will have to nominate or, or, or their representative mm. to all the primaries of the parties in all across the states, okay. which means it will be like a mini. Meaning general election, election. which where, whereby I never have to be out representative all over the across the world. Let us assume APC is doing is doing his own. I never will do that. PDP is doing his own. I never will do that. Uh, about fifty parties are doing that, so they will be spending close to times three or times four of what they've been spending what they for election for now. elections. I totally get what you're saying. We say we don't have money. That's not even an issue. We can, if, if it's going to be if it's going to be transparent and it will get results, I will not mind if we spend so much money to get proper people in power. Okay. But the issue is that it, it's not changed much. Okay. Not changed much. It not change anything. Okay. The Baba will still have their influence. Okay, let me bring back the IPAC national chairman because uh, we lost him due to some connection issues. Uh, Mr. Nzema, can you hear me? Yeah, I think, I think there's uh, a lot of echo at the background from your own side. Eh? But can you hear me now? Uh, a lot better, but we can just manage this. Ah, okay, perfect. Um, so you listened to um, the, the, the lawyer and some of the, the disagreements he has with the new laws, especially the issue of direct primaries. Uh, and um, I'm asking, do you agree with him or are you one of those who are in support of the issue of direct primaries? Uh, this thing is this thing is real echo, and I can't really get your question. Okay, I'm going to ask again. Um, there are seven things in the new, um, the new act, the bill that is supposed to be assented to by Mr. President. And the issue of direct primaries has brought a debate of sorts. And I'm asking what side of the debate you're on. Okay, I, I'm, not getting, I'm not getting the full circle of your question. But I think part of the things I did capture was uh, around direct primaries. Yes. By the political parties. Yes. Um... When this whole thing started with uh, electronic transmission of election results, um, the Inter-Party Advisory Council of Nigeria made it very clear to Nigerians that they should not be over-dramatic about the reversal, a reversal of that particular rejection initially by the members of the National Assembly, specifically the Senate. Uh, uh, why we said we need not be too joyful about it was because we got our own intel that something something terrible was going to happen, and uh, that had to do with the insertion the insertion of the direct primaries, which which is basically you give one good thing on one hand, you take it with the other hand from the other angle. Now, let me be very clear about it. Direct primary is a model that is 
being aspired by even most advanced democratic societies. The American presidential system as currently obtained does not operate the direct primaries. What they have is a hybrid. A hybrid between direct primary and indirect primary, where you now have the collegiate system. Now, in the year 2021, if we want to resort back to the antennal democratic model that is pinned on direct primary with limited suffrage, that means we're not making progress. Now, it's simply unthinkable. Theoretically, theoretically, it's a fantastic idea, it's a fantastic model. But practically, it is impossible. It is humanly impossible. It is also logistic-wise impossible. Now, apart from this, we need to interrogate the motivation for the now seemingly facing all solutions direct primary that is being advanced to be, the, to be the panacea of all our electoral challenges. That is to minimize the quickie rubrics of politi our political ecosystem. Let us ask our question. If the lawmaker or the National Assembly sets out to have a legislation, the intent of that legislation is to address the lacuna within the system, first of all. Mm -hmm. If you don't intend to address this lacuna, the second thing you are trying to do is also to modify or add greater degree of value to the satisfaction of the greater degree of stakeholders that is within that electoral or political ecosystem. Now, but when that is happening, you now find a significant segment of that stakeholder complaining something is wrong. And so stakeholders are complaining, particularly the, the political parties. The political parties were not consulted. They were not consulted before this was mm -hmm. made as a law in this country. And I say it, it's on record. The political parties, the body of political parties, which I lead in Nigeria, was never consulted on this. But but the people who now, made this, but know. the people who agreed on this, uh, permit me please to speak over you. Um, the people who made this, um, you know, imputes are members of your political parties. So yeah, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that if they did took this, they, they made this decision, they should have called the political parties and liaised with you or had a hearing of sorts to, to, to get your two cents into it. So, of course, it beats me when you say the parties were not consulted. Yeah, I, it's still, I, I, I'm not still getting the full circle of your question, but I can pick, I can pick something. You're trying to also reiterate the points I made, that the political parties were yes. not consulted. That's, that's, that, that's the thing I'm catching from your last statement there. Yes. Yes, I, I'm saying on record the parties were not consulted because we are... We made proposals to the National Assembly, the, the House of Representatives and the Senate, during the period of uh, the, uh, the amendment, the input to the, the Constitution Review, as well as the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. There was no time, there was no time we talked about direct primary in our submission to both houses. There was no time we did that. Now, I we took it for granted, and which you also maintain that, what was already there, which is, the option or the liberty for the political parties to either do direct or indirect. And that was what we we worked on and we agree on that. Now for us to now see direct primary, we see it as an afterthought directed to smoke out the, the smaller political parties from the political space. And that is why we say up to this moment we're now concerted. But however, the point I need to make very clearly is if we are going to, if we say, if we say clearly that we are out, to correct the ill of the direct primary, for instance, uh, if we say we are setting out to correct the ease of the direct primaries. Now, the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Will direct primary, will direct, direct primary eliminate imposition of candidates in our electoral system? The answer is no. Will direct, direct primary solve the lingering issue of Godfatherism God in our politics? The answer is no. Will direct primary atrophy the rapacious impact of vote buying in our electoral system? The answer is no. 
will direct primary stop excessive use of money in our electoral system and politics? The answer is no. Will direct primary lead to credible, fair, free, transparent, and inclusive and safety leading election in Nigeria? The answer is no. Will direct primary sufficiently serve as a motivator to drive the critical mass of the electorate to come out and vote and also partake actively in Nigerian politics? The answer is no. Let me go further. Will direct primary promote the use of technology, which INEC has invested heavily in the last few years? The answer is no. Will direct primary enhance effort to stop or checkmate the transmission of COVID-19, considering the crucial, the social and physical distance that they require? The answer is no with direct primary. It would even make it more worse. Hmm. The other thing is this. Will direct primary stop or minimize high litigation that has attended both our primary and secondary elections in this country? The answer is no. Will direct primary reduce or minimize the cost of managing elections in our country? The answer is no. So it makes, no. Me, really, it's, it makes me really wonder why we're pushing or why it was even you know, imputed into the Electoral Act if it's unachievable because it makes... It, it, so it makes you and the um, lawyer uh, in agreement saying that we're not ripe and we're not ready for direct primaries. Exactly. That's the, that's the point we're making. We are not ripe. And if looking at practical examples, look at practical examples. I can give you three states. I can give you three states, for instance. Let's start with the Anambra, Anambra, Anambra Quickly, election. Quickly, because Let's we need to wrap up. Mm -hmm. In the Anambra election, we saw one political party, the APC. The total number of votes by the internal primary was 230,000. 30, that was the, the result of the, the primary of the APC primary for governorship in Anambra State. Now, you had two thirty. Now, what was the entire vote that was cast in Anambra? It's just a little bit about 230, 249, less than 10% of the total number of registered voters in Nigeria. You can see the fraud. That thing was written, it was written in the hotel room. And even the APC stakeholders, the APC people are not even happy with the result. That is one. Two, I heard the colleague there mentioning the legal thing. Now, we saw what happened during the, the, the Ambo Day and the show, uh, that will lose the election, the uh, primary. We saw the number of candidates that came out to, to vote during the primary and what happened after the primary. We saw the inconsistency and all that. It was direct primary. We saw the accrued money that attended that particular primary. Now we go to Kano. We had a situation in Kano. Where we Governor to go to Jay, who also did the primary in that state. And we got a phenomenal number that was very scary. The one they got to the election, the number that came out to actually vote for the main election was even lower than that. So mm. what, point, what point is that these are elections that were conducted, which was, which was done with direct primary. And we saw the lacuna, we saw the inconsistency, we saw the fraud attended to it. So how can you now begin to tell us that direct primary is what it is? Now, on the other side... We, we, we're, we're, we're really is, running out of time. Unfortunately, we cannot continue with this conversation, but I want to say thank you to you. Um, Leonard Nzewa is the national chairman of IPAC. Uh, Tunji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Time is not on our side, but we appreciate your Thank thoughts. you very much. Thank you for having me. Right. Thank you for having me. Thank you all right. Time. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Uh, it's been Plus Politics. But before we go, I would like to give you my take. It's interesting that in 2021, we have been not just bedeviled by COVID-19 and trying to tell people how it's important to get vaccinated, to stay safe. We're also now having to tell people to stay safe from getting shot or getting harassed by a police officer or even being made fun of in, if you have a family member who was shot at or who was injured or who has been a victim of police brutality. Uh, the, the arm of the law does, is not necessarily long enough to cover us all. Uh, the judiciary that is supposed to be the last hope of the common person is also under attack. Um, the police that is supposed to protect and keep us safe in the country we're now being, uh, trying to protect ourselves from them. The government that swore 
uh, to protect also and serve us seem to be serving themselves. So it makes the average Nigerian really wonder, where do we go? Who do we call to? Or do we go back to our tents and just wait for doomsday because it seems to be really close? But then again, some, there are people who say to us, hold on, 2023 is around the corner. But who are the people that, that the system is going to throw up? Is it the same people who will come back with the same stories, making the same promises only to, one way or the other, enslave us and make us leave like those who have no hope? But well, I want to be that person that gives you hope tonight. Don't give up. Keep asking the right questions. Make sure that you don't just get a voter's card. Join a political party today. It's not late. Be part of the decision making. We can no longer sit at ease and hope that God will come down from heaven and help us. Yes, they've declared war against us. They've declared war on us. So we too have to come ready. Make sure that this does not happen again in 2023 because Nigeria is our country and we cannot be enslaved in our fatherland. I am Mary Anako. Thanking you for watching.